Okay, so here we are, Baron. Yes, here we are. Another episode of That Reminds Me Of. How are you today? I'm good. How do you like the new uh, Atmos lighting? Oh, yeah, it's very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I've got some special lighting and some dim backgrounds with little mood lighting going on. It's awesome. Yeah, ready for story time. <laughs> little nip of whiskey. That's right. Uh, a sweet b- biscuit mm. <laughs> and film talk and Mulan. Have you got your glass? Oh, there we go. What is it? What are you drinking tonight? Uh, Red Bull. I'm, I'm still not on the on the grog, you know. What? We're, we're through winter. That's it. Yeah, I was spring. gonna, I was gonna get back on it, on the the first day of spring, and I just didn't. You're just on a roll. You're out of control, Doc. Doesn't make sense. This oh, is so uncharacteristic. That's crazy. That's crazy. Well, there goes any fun this conversation's going to be. <laughs> you, you just watch me go. <laughs> Well, what are we talking about tonight? We are talking about Mulan 2020. The remake, Mm. Disney's latest version of Mulan, live action, straight to Disney Plus. And we've (laughs) spent the extra money to see it because we were that keen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm such a Disney fan. No, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) I had to to, look at your face (laughs) for a moment. But wait, could he actually be? Are, Are you? Uh, look, I, I wouldn't say that I'm a huge Disney fan these days, but I have been in the past. You have? Okay. Yeah, when I was younger, I, I saw every film and, and loved them all. So I have a soft spot for it. And it's fun because I've got two girls now mm. that are the right age. So watching all the films is actually, you know, pretty fun, especially going back to the old ones. Like we watched Honey, I Shrunk the Kids the other day, you know, so... I wouldn't know what a what a Disney film in or is or isn't. So I didn't know that was a Disney film. I just were think you of... ever a child, Doc? <laughs> I must have been. <laughs> there must have been a time. Must have been. Yeah. What did but I like you, but, as a child? But you you never did the action films or the Disney films. That's no. pretty. That's pretty incredible. Are your parents very very intellectual? No, not at all. Okay. I'm trying to think what I would have liked when I was a kid. Oh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Oh, well, that's that's classic. Yep. Footloose. Okay, well, yeah, it's just an interesting detail in the mm. life of Doc. I know. And here we are watching Mulan now of all the times. Uh, but, but I think part of the reasoning was as we started talking about what to watch next and this, this mm. was just the big release that's happening right at this moment. So we thought we had to check it out in a year with not many big releases. And you were particularly interested in the cost of it, yeah? And the whole concept of making people pay for a subscription and then pay for the movie as well. I thought it was gross. I was gross. just gross. I thought, Disney, this is disgusting. What are you doing? <laughs> Taking advantage of parents in COVID is what they're doing. Yeah, uh, they are. But like, yes, you pay the you pay the eight ninety five per month subscription. You get the whole catalog. That's normal. Mm. Then I saw, well, you're going to have to pay a little bit extra to get the movie. I'm okay with that idea. Then I figured out, found out it's going to be 30 something extra dollars, 35 extra dollars almost, uh, just so that you can watch this one movie in their whole catalog. The premiere access thing is just for this one film. And they say, oh, that gives you unlimited watches of it until December when it becomes available (laughs) to everyone. But that's, anyway... Well, Crazy. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into, you know, perceptions of the movie, but I'm not going to watch it several times. <laughs> no, no. And I and I haven't heard my girls uh, mention that they want to chuck it straight back on like they did with, say, something like Frozen. So, yeah. So we paid for the film. We both did it. We have both seen the film. And did I hear right that you've gone back to watch the original as well, Doc? Yeah, I watched the original first because I wanted all the context to bring to this, given I didn't have any Disney context of my own. Cool. See it in order. And so have you, you, you've seen the original Mulan? Yeah, I saw it when it came out and I've seen it a couple times since. Can we spend a minute or two on that first? Yeah. Yes, let's do it. Uh, Your thoughts on Mulan 1998? Well, I've got a really soft spot for it because it's one of the first uh, princess films where the princess is badass. You know, she's, mm. she's a warrior. Um, so that was kind of fresh when it came out. And 
it still holds up pretty well, I think. C- could I ask you a question about the animation style? Yeah. I in in what in watching this, I thought, hang on, that doesn't look like 1998. It looks like 1958. So oh. is is it a conscious choice? Because I think there were things like Toy Story, which would have yeah. perhaps already have been made, and a whole new version right. of what animation looks like. And yeah, Disney this... was slow to the to the CG and the sort of updating of the style. They they stuck with their uh, older style for a while. So totally. it was a studio thing that it was just their their thing, and there were other trendsetters at the time. I don't know the full history, but I have a feeling mm. that they they were basically saying this is what Disney is. This yeah, is what yeah. we do. This is our identity. And so they were slow to make the transition. And the identity, so they really have an identity, don't they? Like the the horses in this in Mulan look the same as the horses in every Disney film, and the bad horses that look different to the good horses. Absolutely. And, and it's the, like they the took grandmother this... looks like every grandmother. Yeah, it's like a branding choice, and it's it's mm. across all a, a whole bunch of the films. Uh, and you see some of that come through into the CG times, uh, like. Mm. Uh, Tangled, for instance, has those horses, but it's a CG version of it. So yeah, yeah, they really they they even even once they started moving into making some pretty great animated uh, like computer generated films, they they kept some of the same style. But I have a soft spot for that. That definitely like The Lion King is still one of the greats. It's such an awesome film, the mm. original, not the remake. And they the the animation style is part of it and it, it works still like i yeah. you can i sort of dare you to show that to any child now and expect them not to cry when mufasa dies for instance like it's oh just... you just wrecked it for me <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> imagine of no, all the spoilers no, I, yeah i haven't seen the lion king are you serious yeah i haven't seen it new or no. old you haven't seen it i've seen neither i i know that Elton John did the song. Now you know Mufasa dies. (laughs) I'm a huge Elton John fan, but even those songs are not my (laughs) favourites. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Well, it's it's a great film. It's a great film. Still, you love all the you love all the music, though, don't you? You've got a soft spot for all the song and dance. I do. I Mm. do. Yep. I'm totally into it. I still think Les Mis is just awesome. You know, so. I'll go for that as well. And does that extend to um, I'll Make a Man Out of You? Yeah. When when I heard that in the in the original Mulan, all I could think of was Chris Lilly doing Mr. G um, <laughs> in a really just camp, <laughs> yes. exaggerated way. And it summed up everything that I hate in song numbers, to be honest, in that particular <laughs> one. I know. It's so one. on the nose and it's, yeah, it's probably... Although people, although kids love it, that's one of the ones that kids would go around singing on yeah. loop once yeah. once they've heard it. So, uh, and the songs in Mulan, the original, aren't the, aren't particularly. They're not the Disney numbers that I that I think of first, probably. Well, look, even even though I've I've canned it a little bit, I ha- half enjoyed the original. Like it wasn't bad. I went for the ride. I thought there were some problematic things, like the the whole issue of gender was just funny and mm, in today in today's day right this summer yeah. feels pretty off yeah i didn't didn't think it aged well so like i wanted to mention that film because having been fresh off that i had some very particular things i was on the lookout for yeah in the in the new one and one of them was to see if they righted any of the problems i'd had on the on the um how both gender and race Interesting. Were presented. What was your take on that? Uh, well, on the on the old one or the new one? On the on the new one, if they had righted any of the the wrongs or the awkwardnesses. Mm, not particularly. They did a, a valiant effort at times, but I think in like in the first one, it was almost ah. Oh, they somehow managed to reinforce gender roles while trying to subvert them. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they did that. Like every every step along the way, when they're trying to be a little bit, you know, um, feminist, and uh, it, it just seemed to just, for me, read the other way. I agree. I think part of it was is that is the Chinese culture that they were trying to mm. embrace at the same time as make these statements about gender roles. And I had some real issues with things like towards the 
the very end, there's a really clear moment where mm. where Mulan could take the career choice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just be like, I'm I'm kicking ass right now. Uh, and here's the best opportunity ever. Just landed at my feet. First woman to ever do it. Oh, no, I better go home and look after my dad and mum. I know. You know what I mean? Like that is just such a strange, a strange choice I, I found. And it was moments like that that I thought this film is playing very heavily to a Chinese audience. And, and, yeah. and then I started, you know, when those things came up, I started thinking, well, what is Disney trying to juggle here? It's quite unusual. I, I couldn't agree more. Do you know what that reminded me of? It was like you're at work and you're, you're making some piece of content and you've got the stakeholders from all around the business. You've got marketing over there and legal there and product and you, yes. they're all got their say, ha- having their say and you end up with this wishy-washy version of what you originally wanted. It was like they had yep. the American feminists and the Chinese communists both at the table yes, uh, having to just chart a course to Classic. an ending that would, would um, satisfy them all. I think that's a, that sums up some of the biggest problems for me with this mm. film. It, I, I found it quite disturbing to watch at times because it's the the I think the term I wrote down is dyslexic because yeah. that's what it felt like to me. It felt like a film that just couldn't read itself properly, you know, with everything it was trying to do and achieve. Mm. Um, well, we've we've sort of gone everywhere <laughs> but the synopsis, and I wonder if that is a fine because so many people know what Mulan is, right? It's such a such a classic story. But I think maybe we should give a high level one. What do you think? To those people like me out there who didn't know what Mulan even referred to yeah. before, it, I think it'll probably make the rest of the conversation make more sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you have a do you have a time period for this? Because I know it's a bit of a mashup of history. Like the history is not exact, but um, we're we're sort mm. of. I think the original story of Mulan, which is a myth, is it is 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 there any truth to it? I mean, she was meant to be a nomadic warrior mm. woman, right? Pre. Uh, like Kublai and Genghis Khan, as far as I can tell. But this sort of this film seems to land you around around uh, Genghis and Kublai, right? Somewhere in there. So I'm guessing you better you better at your history than I am. I yeah. don't know. It's anyway, in the past. It's in the past. We'll just say that. Uh, and people fought with swords and they rode horses. Okay, so um, Mulan is a rebellious young girl in her village her father seems to be someone of importance in the village and Mm. there's an expectation that she's coming to the age where she can be married off and she's going to be a good daughter and a good wife and uh but she's got a strong chi they keep referring to which i think is just like she's got uh power it's the force the force she has the force she's like a young Mm. jedi she's meant to be married off and instead what happens is this invading armies become a threat and uh, the emperor makes a statement that every household is going to give up one of the men from the household to become part of the people's army and they'll go out and and f- defend against this force. And the only man in, in Mulan's family is her dad and he's crippled. He's sort of had his leg shattered at some point or something. Mm-hmm. He's just not up for fighting. So uh, she takes the opportunity to steal away in the night with his his armor and his sword and join the army dressed up as a boy and from there she struggles with a man's world and uh, becoming a warrior in that setting and let sort of revealing her true power because she's got this hidden chi and that won't come out until she kind of um, embraces herself and who she is fully mm. and she slowly starts to work her way up the ranks in terms of being the top of the class and then is thrust into actual battle when it seems the war is brought forward or the advancing army's kind of taken them by surprise and she has to prove herself in battle. And she does prove herself, doesn't she? She does. She Good really does. Proper. Yep. And there's a subplot too. There's the the evil guys, whatever uh, race or group or cult that they are historically. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... There's a bit of a story where there's a an equivalent to Mulan, you know, someone, a, a woman that also has the chi. Mm, uh, which is new in this remake. Yeah. We don't have this same story in the original. No, we don't. And she she's clearly gone to the, the dark side of the chi. 
um, <laughs> in, because she has this whole history of being left out and not accepted, as, you know, because she's different. And it just happens that the, the evil dude is willing to accept her because he can ride on her coattails with all her power. Yep. Uh, so then it becomes a, without wanting to dwell on the, the um, Star Wars references, it very much becomes a Skywalker, a Vader Totally. Didn't thing. occur to me. That's great. That's absolutely right. But between the two two women, so that's a... Yeah. Disney now owns the whole Star Wars franchise, so maybe they were inspired. Uh, maybe that's why they bought it, so they weren't sued. <laughs> that's right. It's so similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's our first reminds me of? Yeah, Star I think Wars. I had to, had to reference it. Uh, yeah, I had to reference it early. I just want to know out of the box... I've done. I've rattled on a bit. I got a sidetracked on the 1998 version. Yeah. But Mulan 2020, you hated the fact that you had to pay for the damn thing. Mm-hmm. But then you watched it, and did you like it? I liked it, but I didn't like it very much. I, <laughs> Beautifully said. There was there was elements about it that were great, but as a whole, I thought the film wasn't very successful. Mm. Well, first of all, what about you? Overall thoughts? Word for word, same as you. Mm. I didn't mind it. You know, it was. It was okay. <laughs> I wanted to like it a lot more. I think I went in thinking this could be great. And and of all of the live action Disney films, this one makes probably the most sense out of all of them so far. We don't have any animated characters to deal with here. Mm. And they, they I thought the one of the clever choices was to get rid of the little animated um, Eddie Murphy dragon <laughs> because it, it just would have been so bizarre in this world. So I thought that was a clever yeah. choice to, to get rid of that. And they handled... The idea of the spirit guide really well anyway with that kind of imagined or she, only Mulan could see it, Phoenix. Yep. So I thought I thought that was well handled. I had mixed feelings about that. So uh, that was one of the things I was really interested to see mm. how they handled because it, it really felt clumsy and out of place in the first one, that Eddie, Mur- that Eddie Murphy creature. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if he was a dragon or a phoenix or what he was in that in mm. that one. Um, he was sort of like an orange pink panther or some something. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I was actually thinking that oh, they've just they've just said we want the donkey from Shrek in this. Mm. But then yeah. I realised no, this predates. So in it was Shrek, the other way they around, actually, they actually said we want the <laughs> yeah. we want the Eddie Murphy dragon. He was so wonderful. Uh, that's great. So you but were it, happy to lose it in the in the remake. Uh, I, what I would have preferred, I, I didn't know how they were going to handle it, and I would have preferred that somehow, somewhere beyond my imagination, because I don't think I could have worked out how to do it, but I wish they'd achieved incorporating it in a way Better, that worked. Right. Trying to have it as a spoke as, as a speaking character still, even yeah. though it might come across in a different way from the Yeah, because dragon, I, think it, I think the film lacked, lacked humour, and that's pro- that would have been why... That character was inserted so clumsily, I think, in the first one because it just needed that play um, mm, during great it. Point. Humor, no humor. It's, it's almost a void of humor, and that's such a strange thing for a Disney film, particularly yeah, they, when they had made a fair effort in the original. And they they even stripped humor out when they didn't particularly need to. Like there was a, a really funny scene in the first one, the whole teapot thing where where Mulan completely messes up when she's um, sitting for that, I don't know, it's an exam or something of how, how yeah. wonderful a lady is to make sure she's good enough to be married, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the, the first the first version of that was riotous. Yes. Uh, and the second was pretty funny. It was sort of, but it was much more subdued. So I'm going to place some of that on the director. I don't know if I should, if that's entirely correct, but I think mm. I got a real sense the director's Nikki Caro, and um, she is a New Zealand director that's done some. She's you know done some pretty great work. Like Whale mm. Rider comes to mind for, as one of just the great New Zealand films that's yeah. been made uh, to date, and that's something she made. So I was surprised a little bit by the choice of her for this film um, because she's done nothing else really like it, and it also I was just a little bit surprised that there wasn't a Chinese director at the helm of this. Um, Not that you have to do that, but I just think they might have handled some of the, the, I don't know, some of the details of this film a little better. Yeah. And what really confused me at times is that 
I'm watching this and I can see it's heavily inspired by some of the great cinematic Chinese films that have come out in the last 10 years, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, mm. or Hero with Jet Li, um, yeah. or it was a House of a Thousand Daggers, I think it was. Like these sorts of films, you can see it in there. Like there's the bamboo forests, there's the mountains, there's the sort of very romantic scenery. Um, and she did a great job of some of that. Mm. Uh, but then at the same time, and this is this that dys- dyslexia again, like that's totally off for a Disney film. You know what I mean? Like you can do mm. little bits of it, but it's like, I think she leaned into that so far. And I wonder if what she was actually trying to make was like a house of thousand daggers or something like that. And, but just was like, well, I have to deal with this Disney thing as well. Mm. You know? Yeah. I, that, that, that pinpoints one of the things that makes me uncomfortable about it. One of the few things, oh, sorry, not few, one of the many things that makes me uncomfortable about the film. It feels like a white version, white person's version of Chinese history. And I think historically that's okay. Like when the world wasn't so connected and, you know, the Western world doesn't have much access to other cultures. Mm. I think of like Breakfast of Tiffany's with the ridiculous... Asian Mickey Rooney, sort of silly portrayals from from our history. Yeah, I can sort of forgive some of that stuff because we, no one has access to the culture. But these days, I don't know. I don't feel like America needs to be telling Chinese stories when you know the Chinese or any other culture can do it perfectly well themselves. And even though it's a Disney film, I think we can probably at this point start going, well, you know, a Chinese director would probably tell this Disney story better. Mm. You know, if you chose the right director, you could, you could be great. Yeah. Uh, be much well, uh, in that. I think this film should have been one or the other. It should have been much more Disney or yeah. they get a Chinese director. And they make the film that they were trying to make with Mulan <laughs> yeah. here. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah, just, good point. Strange choices. There were, there were a bunch of strange choices throughout the film like that. Um, and also, you get the sense that history is being messed with here a little bit. And mm. I, so I did a bit of research afterwards. And one of the things that I sort of read coming up a few times was that people were quite upset that that the whole history has been flipped. And yep. you've got Mulan being part of the uh, Han Chinese people which is the majority in China now. Oh, really? And the invading force is is the nomadic tribes and the, the <gasps> northern people, right? Whereas actually Mulan historically is from those northern tribes. And I believe it, the Han people have like nothing to do with that story, you know? So wow. Um, the things I was reading was just saying, and one reference was this would be like telling the story of Pocahontas, and but you're telling it from the settlers or the uh, yeah, sort of the settler's point of view, and you use a white actress to play Pocahontas, and you know, like they, they they were saying basically not all Chinese people are the same, right? So you can't just make the make Mulan. You can't whatever, you can't make like it that. whatever you want want yeah. it to be. <laughs> exactly, that's an outrage. I, I knew that I knew that there were, there were changes in who all the people were, but I didn't know it was um that crazy. So any any, any good good bits? Like what? What did you What did you enjoy about it? Yeah, I think some of the some of that's beautiful cinematic Chinese scenery and mm. filmmaking like worked for me. I did enjoy that. Um, I thought the actress uh, who played um, Mulan, Yifei Liu, um, was great. I thought she did a she did a yeah, really she was good, good job. Uh, and she seems to be getting so much praise in the reviews since then. Like she's oh, definitely a rising star. Uh, and I loved seeing Donnie Yen appear. I love seeing Jet Li appear, although he was unrecognizable as the emperor. Mm. Um, I just thought that was that was that was pretty fun. Donnie Yen's such a legend. I mean, just I just, I just think he's great. I, I don't know which one Donnie Yen, Donnie so is. <laughs> Donnie Yen is uh, Commander Tung. He's the so oh, you've yeah. got the emperor and then you've got the other sort of senior guy. Yeah, he was good. Yeah. yeah. He's so he's most famous from the Ip Man films probably. Mm. I don't know if you've heard of those. No. Uh, I don't know you if just, Man... you're schooling me today. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> he has a film which is a remind me of for this. The English name of its dragon, it's uh Wu Wuxia is the is the Chinese uh name of it and it's just 
this awesome detective kung fu film. It's like a detective noir meets mm. kung fu set in a village in China, and and Donnie Yen is is right at the center of it. Uh, it's it's so good. It's one of the best of the and, genre, I think. And what's what's similar aside from having Donnie Yen in it? It's the village lifestyle. It's the the romantic scenery, uh, yep. the kung fu. Although the kung fu in Dragon is just like a thousand times better. The yeah. fighting and that's so awesome. Um, but yeah, that's it's just another great Chinese film that I could imagine was one inspiration in in the pile of inspiration for this one. The the village set was was quite nice. I mm. thought how it felt like Shakespeare's Globe, you know, in uh, a play in the round. Uh, yeah, and it just had a an all inclusive. It felt like a drama. Um, and it felt like it felt like a set, but I thought that worked. It was nice, nice that it, it started there, and then she went out into the big bad world with sort of vistas of scenery, yeah. and then came back to that little place again. Which I, 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 for me, that's like one of the biggest disappointments of the film is that she does that. Yeah, it's it the whole family thing. Like I, I understand the cult that it's that it's a huge thing in the culture, mm. um, but at at that, at, in this story, at that point of the story, it just felt like the wrong time to drop that one. Although I'm not sure it was as bad as the ending of the 98 one. So when she's given the sword at the end, I think the grandmother or some, some woman in the story says, if you ask me, he should have, uh, she should have brought him home. Oh no, if you ask me, he should have brought home a man or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So all they want is for her to get married. Yes. And I thought that's, that's the perfect opportunity to to go against that, but yeah. lo and behold, the man appears. Yeah. So they they resolve it in almost the nice Disney way. It it was so odd that I just thought the next scene could have been her in the kitchen with the sword cutting the tomatoes. Yeah. You know, I just felt that <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, that's crazy. I've thought about this a little bit because I've got because I've got daughters mm. watching these films, but. Um, if you want to know what a, a 30, late 30s white male thinks about what, uh, which of the <laughs> Disney films has like the strongest <laughs> feminine power message, yeah, it's uh, Moana, like by a mile for me. It's just like one of the, even people loved Frozen for this, but mm. Frozen, there's a love story and a dependency on a, on a male figures yeah. woven through it. Mulan, like that's just out the window. There's a there is a a girl out to save the world, and it's her own will that just gets her through to the end, you know. And every and yeah. actually, any male figure in that just sort of lets her down. So, it's I I just think that's one of the strongest of those sorts this of is messages. Mo- Moana. Moana, yeah. Moana. Some of the gender stuff I found so uneasy. Mm. If you go to the first one, um, to begin with. Just uh, when, because this is a kids' film, isn't it? Surely? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the bloke, one of the blokes, takes his top off in the animated version, and you see her peeking and and looking at him with no top on, and then, um, <laughs> which you just that that was you could get away with that totally back then, you know, and no one would blink an eye at it. Yeah, I just yeah, and then and then the the nude swimming scene with mm-hmm. first the first one in the first film. Uh, Which is just, a little funnier, right? It's a little more playful in the first one because don't all the guys jump in the water and she's yeah in the middle of that situation trying to keep herself covered. It, but it, it still made me it made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, and that was another one of the things I was wondering how they would play in this one. And I have to say they've completely succeeded in making it at least as awkward for me. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it, it feels more fraught as well. Like it feels it feels like it's more I guess the 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 original has a sort of innocence to it in that in mm-hmm. that it feels like a non issue. Whereas in this film you can feel that it's an issue and they've carefully tried to like work their way around it. Mm. Um, and it's just made it more awkward, you know, more fraught and more un, uneasy and um, and particularly the bit where she's in the water, the scene Whoa. you're talking about, Whoa. and the gu- just just the one guy by himself comes in, and there was no way that personally that I could watch that without going, 
oh, wow, there's a rape about to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like the second he discovers what's going on here, she's in trouble. Um, it, yeah. And of course, it's so obvious too, because her, her shoulders are out of the water and he's got these giant freaking muscles and yeah. she's got a, such clearly like a feminine body. You know, she's... It's so obvious. It's obvious. Yeah. It's and very it's uncomfortable. Kids, and it's a kid's film. And I just, I just felt, I felt funny. I just wish this gets me a lot with um, sort of those with sex scenes in in general in movies. I hate the PG versions when when they're just trying to skirt around things. And yeah. I, I would so much rather just Antichrist. I'd, I'd, I want Antichrist, <laughs> or I want yeah. it not mentioned. Yes, I just don't want it to be in there. I want G or R. Yeah, nothing great. in between. And I like this, that. This was a really odd version of PG, and and look, there was they didn't seem to be shying away from that sexual tension between mm. the two characters all through. And I, I just wondered about that. Like that, that is very twenty twenty to be to be open to you know any sort of attraction regardless of gender. So yeah. that's that's good. Oh, you read in, it that way. That's interesting. Well. Not that I read it that way. I just think that it's she's obviously looks like a woman, mm. and he's a no. No, I, I don't. I, I can't explain it. Just it felt. Well, that would have been that felt. That odd. is an interesting take on it, though. That would be interesting if that if there was some intention there to say, well, you know, maybe this is more than a friendship going on here. But then that just that just didn't feel like Disney to me. That just didn't no, feel like the sort of thing they would purposely do and yet they seem to purposely do it to me oh well there you go there's the thing again though right where i felt like they didn't purposefully do that but they managed to pull it off by making Mm. a wishy-washy film you know yeah so i don't know if i've told you about this before but (laughs) i was on the crew for marco polo the netflix show for a little while really yeah and just shadowing one of the directors working on a couple episodes and all of the sets and that, that whole kind of um, the way they did the villages and the way they made the throne room and mm. like all of that was giving me flashbacks to this, to being on set this of Marco Polo because it's same sort of period in time. Um, the throne rooms look remarkably similar. You've got that high, ornate, crazy jade covered th- throne <laughs> with gold everywhere and light streaming down. And um, so I was, I just was having flashbacks to that experience the entire time because it felt like I was watching I was watching the same show at times I'll have to watch it now that I know you're connected it's again a little bit like this there's a blend of things that worked Mm. and some things that didn't work so well in that show Um, and actually that kind of reminds me of this film as well like you know it's it's got a lot of kung fu in it but the kung fu is not maybe as good as it should be for that (laughs) for that um, sort of show and um, it's beautiful looks stunning uh, but then there's other elements you go, I don't know if that's quite working. So that was, yeah, that was an interesting experience to be on there and learning so much from all these people and then see how the final thing came out on Netflix as well. Yeah. So we're on, that reminds me of. So yeah, if you, you got any others? Light of My Life the, that we reviewed, you know, a few weeks ago because of the um, the fact that a little girl is, well, not, not so little in Milan's case, but uh, a female is pretending to be a male. Um, and and hiding it from the world. Beautiful. Yes. Yes. Wouldn't have never. I don't think that ever would have occurred to me. But yes, for sure. That's <laughs> great. It doesn't go much beyond that. But but that's a pretty no. strong similarity. I'll just tick some off the list that we've already discussed, and that's Star Wars. Clearly, for reasons already mentioned, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, I think is a strong reference. Uh, just when it seemed to me when they got the all the crazy acrobatic supernatural acrobatics right it reminded me of crouching tiger that was few and far between i would have liked that to be done well more often but when it was done well it looked all right looked pretty good when she was skirting across rooftops and Uh, yeah I, i i got that strongly too and that's been done so well in so many films uh it's surprising that they didn't make more of that in this film i think they they could have gone a lot further with it Particularly as they were given mm. some license with the idea that she, that her her chi is kind of almost like magic. It's so there's a there's the ability to jump 
crazy distances and turn into mm. birds and all sorts of you know wild stuff they could have taken that quite a lot further i thought yeah they didn't introduce the that whole concept of the universe very well did they no it sort of just leaked out of the storyline that somehow she starts to move a bit better than the others yeah um I don't, and i don't know um, if i like that or dislike it like on some level i don't mind that idea of yeah, yeah just letting it come through the story itself rather than kind of introducing it too much and giving you the rules in a way mm. uh but then again they didn't do that that well like it could have been handled a lot better yeah and i felt that you never had much of a sense of what mulan or her nemesis were really capable of so therefore there was no there was no rules of the game so it was all just theater you know when when she's trying to save the emperor you think well okay she can probably do anything if she falls she'll probably fly up and recover or like you never had yes. a had a sense of real danger you were just watching for the just exactly. w- watching to see what they would do but never really scared yeah uh, the other film that i was thinking of for this was i got a sense of braveheart and i got a sense of the last of the mohicans from this as well oh yeah uh, Braveheart for the big battles and the whole kind of sense of having a leader who's going to change the game. Um, mm. And Last of the Mohicans, it, it has that kind of you're being pulled into a world from another time and there's a romanticism to it and it's all going to come to a head in, in, a, in a battle. It has some of that vibe going through it as well. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and, and along those lines, Game of Thrones. Hmm. Absolutely, to, which is a completely different universe. There, there, but there were a lot of a lot of similarities, particularly with the. Again, I keep on going back to the '98 version, but that it looked like it was set north of the wall. You haven't seen Game of Thrones, still, have you? I have. Yeah, no, I have. No, yeah, okay. Uh, and it looked like the baddies were the White Walkers, <laughs> right? Um, you even yeah. had like the one-eyed Raven. It's not um, wrong. Figure yes. and the cannons had dragon heads and. There were so many, so many similarities, and a lot right. of those sort of transferred to the, to the um, twenty twenty one. Never would have occurred to me, but that's that is great. Yes, the whole north of the wall stuff is 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 perfect. It felt yeah. a bit Battle of the Bastards too. Considering it had all of those references to lean on, and there was the potential for such a massive battle in this. Mm. You know, I could imagine this could have been an epic battle that then led up to the avalanche right it had all the ingredients to just sort of build 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 become down to the last like yeah you know any it's they were about to lose and then the avalanche but they just didn't really do that and it it feels like a shame feels like another missed opportunity with this film it was a missed opportunity that that was another one where i was wondering how they'd handle it because the Mm. the avalanche scene in the original was quite breathtaking in its, it's violence and ferocity yeah. and i thought how are they going to translate this into live action plot wise i thought they did pretty well like the the idea of how they made the avalanche happen because originally i think she just shot a like an arrow or something. like an arrow or something at it <laughs> no, it, it was, was ludicrous those, uh, fireworks or, yeah, but yeah the fact that she sort of coaxed them into um shooting the big you know uh, cannon into there i thought that made narrative sense Mm-hmm. But the way that they played it out was just implausible. Like she just appeared like magic up on the top of that mountain in the perfect spot, having. Well, if you think what that what that scene is, right? That's the kind of end of the second act. The big we've built to this big moment, right? Mm. Um, if that was in Game of Thrones or lord of the rings or you know any of these we would have built up like the whole film to this yeah. moment it would have been such a key moment and they wouldn't mess it up you know that you'd all the effort would be in making that intense and great mm. and you don't get that feeling from this film at all no it feels like it's just another plot point that's been kind of handled mediumly well so that we can move on to the next one yeah not bad yep mm. good tick yeah you get your <laughs> yeah. certificate for the course <laughs> that's it i've got one more um this is one i think this is disney is coco disney yeah pixar disney i think yeah okay um it's pixar as well anyway yeah disney coco i've seen because my nephews love it so i've seen little snippets of it several times 
uh, and they play with the whole idea of the ancestors being dead um, and having some part, dead ancestors having some part in the storyline. So that was really a reference for the first one. Yeah. Uh, but I mention it probably because, again, I was interested to see how they handled that in the new one, those, you know... Um, and they don't really at all. They, it's not in there. But I didn't they, mind it. I didn't mind how they handled it because it, it felt it felt out of place in the first one. It was wound up with the whole Eddie Murphy donkey and that whole subplot just seemed yeah. like they you could take out the scenes and have no impact on yeah. the on the storyline. But then that said, I missed it and wished they'd been true to that and somehow so, somehow brought it in more nicely in the in the latest one. Totally. You know there's going to be no barely any merchandise out of this film as well. How which come? is interesting. Well, I just cuz normally the Disney model has been you have all these characters and they're all pretty mm. animated and cool looking and then they have like the little dragon character, sort of the little pet uh, yeah. or you know and the Jaja and Binks. then yeah, exactly. Um the Eddie Murphy dragon, the um you know, any in it, oh, like Sebastian from the Little Mermaid, and mm-hmm. all these all these characters that just sort of follow the hero around. Um, I just wonder if that's something that now we're into these live action films, we've lost. Because mm. what what would you do in terms of merch for these? I guess you could have some action figures, but they're not going to be very cute action figures. They're going to be more like just kind of realistic. Yeah, uh, it doesn't characters. doesn't quite work. Yeah. No, the Disney feel works in the animated universe when it's just a bit more saccharine. Yeah. And um, I don't know, they they can play by their own rules and get away with being what they are. Uh, but you translate that into the into live action, it's it's um doesn't quite work. There's not enough subtlety or anything. No, something's lost because they're just they're just people, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm about um, land out. Me too. Me too, Doc. I think we've sort of circled around the same dissatisfaction with chunks, big chunks of the film, really, and a feeling that it was filmed pretty well and put together pretty well, but there's nothing very particularly memorable about it. Would you say that sums it up? Uh, that completely sums it up. Um, I'm sure there's our conversation about it is extremely memorable, but <laughs> the the film itself, okay, it was all right. Yeah, yeah. And look, we we went out of our comfort zone a little bit here doing a Disney film in all the other films <laughs> that we've done to date. So it's a shame it wasn't a little more fun, but I still think it was worth checking out. Okay, well, Baron. Next week or next episode, something different again. Yep, I can't wait. Awesome. Cheers, Doc. See ya. Catch ya. 